The Riksbank is the world's oldest central bank, but it's at the heart of a modern economic debate. Sweden's economy recovered strongly after the global financial crisis, but after the Riksbank raised interest rates in 2010 and 11, it's now had to cut them to a record low of 0% and it's fighting against deflation. I asked Stefan Ingvers, governor of the Riksbank, how easy is it to be a central banker today? Well, the world is co quite complicated because we're going through an episode when uh, when it's hard to recognize uh, some of the some of the combination of numbers, if I call it that, talking about growth, inflation, and unemployment, and things like that. Because uh, we're not going through the great moderation anymore. It's it's quite different. Quite different. Is deflation dangerous for Sweden, and what impact will low oil prices have? We don't think that that's uh, that that's going to happen because the CPI includes uh, interest rate uh, uh, payments, and, and given that we have lowered the policy rate, that's essentially what ma makes the CPI coming in on the on the low side. But essentially, given where where we are in the cycle, given that uh, global growth seems to be reasonably okay, uh, that means that inflation is actually going to go up over the couple over the coming couple of years. And then we've had a, a really dramatic fall in the oil price in, in the past six months. How does that complicate a central banker's task? Well, in the short run, inflation comes in lower than otherwise, and we have reacted to that by, by pushing our uh, policy rate path uh, to the right so that it will take longer before we start moving the rate up from zero where, where we are at, at presently. Uh, well, on the other hand, I mean, for the nation as a whole, I mean, it get, gas gets cheaper at the pump, and and in that sense, it will go, do good things for the economy, despite the fact that uh, that inflation comes in a little bit lower than we expected in the past. Nobel Prize-winning economist Paul Krugman has called the Riksbank's rate rises in 2010 and 11 the most gratuitous policy error of the crisis. Does Mr. Ingvers find that sort of criticism fair? Well, people can have all sorts of views on what to do and what not to do. But if go if you go back to 2010 and 2011, uh, particularly in 2010 when growth was at six percent and inflation around two percent, it was very very reasonable back then to assume that we would move towards some kind of normalization. Then what happened was that normalization took a lot longer than 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 we and many others expected, and that we just have to just have to live with. And with rates now at zero, could the Riksbank introduce something like negative policy rate or even QE? Our central scenario is that we can stay at zero until the latter part of 2016. Uh, but if that were not to be the case because uh, bad things happen in, in different parts of the world, then we obviously would have to do more in order to deal with the inflation, inflation issue to get inflation up. And then that means that we would need to expand our balance sheet in different ways. We can buy assets, we can lend to the banks. Uh, we can also actually push down the policy rate into, into a negative territory, but it's uh, too, late, too early to say what kind of a combination we would come up with. And so something uh, quite dramatic would have to happen either in the country or around us uh, for us to change uh, tack uh, completely. But if that were to happen, then we are ready to do whatever it takes to get the inflation rate up.